Thank you guys and welcome back to the Paladins Console League Game 2 about to get underway. I'm Dolson on the desk now joined by Gormizer. He switched seats, but uh, he's still here with Dave me. Dave came in and just pushed my chair no, over to the other side. I, I physically shoved him over there. Uh, no, but this matchup, Bust Down and Cyclone, a matchup that we got uh, used to towards the end of the last one. Cyclone yeah. traditionally coming out on top, 12-0 and in their last split, notably. But Bust Down was always kind of that second place team, showed some improvement over the split, and uh, every once in a while would make some of these games interesting. And that's the thing is, uh, this this is one of the teams that had the most potential, I think, to take yeah. down Cyclone. Like every region had their number one, and every region had a team that was just behind them. Where it's just like, okay, you could possibly do it. For some, there that gap was a little bit larger, like between Elevate and the rest of their region, versus like where you saw Onslaught and Nemesis coming into sure. it. Where it's just like, okay, you guys could actually be back and forth depending on who wins this last set but this was one of those regions where bust down if they you know have been able to spend their off season tweaking those small things sure. they could very easily come in and win well look at the cyclone roster of course you have ue kings welsh mania fanatics and scarcity yeah. coming out for cyclone which is a that's a good roster good of course players. on the opposite side you look at bust down uh, it's Styles, I believe, Dreams, Perdago, Emmerfish, and Aryavan. So some changes coming in from the last split, maybe some net increases. Remember that we saw a look at Cyclone at the MSI, but haven't seen Bust Down honestly since the last week. The teams obviously have been practicing a lot. Got some good, uh, got some good information, maybe even on Cyclone yeah. going towards the MSI. But without further ado, let's take a look at the map bands going into set number two here of the day. Fish Market, Jaguar Falls. Interestingly enough, Fish Market banned out here by Cyclone. Timber Mill and Serpent Beach to round things out, so Fish Market and Timber Mill, they just don't want to play on any of those maps. <laughs> I'm sure people they share hate the sentiment Timber Mill. Of the Paladins <laughs> I was going to say, that, that's, that is a Paladins community <laughs> ban, very much so. <laughs> they just put a poll out on Twitter, like, what two maps should we ban? And everyone's like, dude, gotta These get rid of Fish Market. Like, well, Fish Market, to me, stands out just because it's one where you could play literally anything sure. and still win as long as you know the map well. I guess that's fair. That's an entirely it's, fair way of looking really at it. It's a really weird map. But we're not going to get to see that today. Instead, uh, let's take a look and see what map number one is going to be in this set. Frog Isle, so a little bit of weirdness. Not necessarily, but uh, maybe lends itself to some sniper play. We saw some Maeve in the last set as well. Frog Isle can maybe be some Maeve, maybe a little Willow on top of it. I really liked seeing some of those flankers and, uh, and and blasters come into the meta as well, at least in set number yeah. one. Yeah, and I feel like I've just not seen as much Frog Isle this split. Sure. Granted, there's only literally been two days of Premier League for this split for there to be, but there were a lot of maps in that Premier League. I think like 38 yeah. over the, the two days. So coming into it, I'm excited just to see that. But it's also one of those maps that opens itself to hit scan a little bit deeper than what you would see out of the right. last set, really, where it's coming down like Kinesa, Strix, all of a sudden become part of the equation. You look maybe a little more heavily at Leon if one of those or both of those get banned or taken. So you have like a little bit more flexibility, but it's even more hit scan right. focused. Well, the bands themselves largely similar to what we saw in set number one. Tyra, Drogos, Torvald, and Talus. That was actually interesting to look at in set number one is that Torvald was largely unpicked and unbanned throughout most of those games. Well, definitely unpicked. Maybe banned once or twice, but but we did not see any uh, Torvald play. Going to get banned out this time, so we're not going to get to see him. But that opens up Genos for bust down, and that's been sort of a high-priority pick. You get a, a hit scan, maybe a victor. It's not going to happen this time, but you pair that with something like a Genos, and you're in for a little bit of hurt. It's one of those things that you like. You grab him with the hopes of getting the next best thing afterwards, right. but you have to make it through two and three here, and this is the problem is that, you know, Genos with Victor would be probably the most winning combination you could have on console. Yeah, you'd think. But there's, like, no way you let both through and get both unless something there's else, like, unless yet. you don't ban a Talus, right? And yeah. that comes through. Then you probably maybe see first pick Talus, Genos Victor, but if that ever happens, then someone's not doing the entirety of their job right. Yeah, I, I was also, this is besides the point because it's not going to get picked again, but Terminus twice in the row, last yeah. set was uh, was interesting. I was joking with Stefan. I was like, you know, the, of all the games to move away from the Terminus, the one where it had a decent game on Splitstone Quarry and not the bad game on Serpent Beach, still, still baffling to me, but... That's, uh, like I said, all besides the point. They are going to get a Vivian paired with the Genos, and, and you said, Oof. you, you p pointed out the potency of maybe a Victor paired with the Genos, but this time around, it's going to be the Vivian 
which honestly in many ways could even be a little scarier. Once those Sentinels are up and, and they start to fire away, uh, that's a lot of damage being returned over to Cyclone. Honestly, just covering it up, I don't care what the last two picks are, right? That's, like, a, that's, that's a star a studded combination first three, yeah. right there. You get a Genos buff onto Atlas and onto Vivian, and the only downside right now is dealing with range fights. Like, Vivian sure. will melt these tanks. Atlas should be able to kind of cur control and corral the back line. <laughs> I said it wasn't even get picked, and but now it is. <laughs> I just, I want to see something, I guess, like this Eevee that they're hovering, which is already kind of blowing my mind, considering I think I can count the amount of times I've seen a console Eevee on one hand. And they get the I'm, Terminus again. I'm eating my words. Yeah. I said, well, it's not going to get picked here, so there's no, no point no, in even talking about it. But all right, here it is on Frog Isle. Is there any merit to the Terminus pick? I think he does a lot of things well, especially against, like, Victor and specifically Leon if they come through in terms of, like, the Power Siphon. He has a lot of control. It's just going back to what in Kresnik had even said during the last set. He feels there more no off-tanky now than he does point-tanky. Right. And he used to be, like, the point-tank. Again, I, I had kind of matched up. Him versus Inara was always what we saw. And then he just fell off. He disappeared. I think for right. a portion of that, he was just banned away. And then now he's coming back in, and it's like you want him – where your Atlas would be, not where your Anara or your Barrack would be. So it's kind of weird seeing that, and that's, I think, going to be the biggest hurdle to overcome. Well, I mean, if you cover up the top of the screen, because if history teaches us anything, it's that Cyclone has a big advantage in this game just because of their lineup. Do you like one better, names notwithstanding? I like Bust Down's draft better. Right. It depends on the Eevee, and it depends on the Terminus, but I like it better. Well, there's a lot of dependencies, <laughs> but they showed a little improvement over the course of the last split. Will they actually be able to unseat Cyclone well, we're going to have to send it down to your casters to find out. Greetings. I'm back. They let me back in here. I got past security. I'm here to commentate with my good friend. How did you? Did Chris you come Lee. in the back door? I did. I did, actually. Yeah. See, while you and Dave have your cots, uh, I yeah. sleep outside. I have to sleep outside the doors. No, oh, it must be where they had us do, like, the players do the exercise outside. There was, like, yeah, a mat yeah, that yeah, they yeah, left yeah, there. Yeah. Was that you? That, yeah, that was me. Yeah, I brought oh, that. Okay. Well, we're here on Frog <laughs> Isle. Back in some, some really interesting picks, I think, for, for console. I want to mm. see what this EV does because... I know that historically, even like scrimming against these console teams, they've they've just banned Eevee because they're like, we're not going to play it. We do right, not want to yeah. see you on it. Um, I'm surprised to see them picking that up. Yeah, a lot of emphasis onto the blink. I mean, it makes sense. Kill reduce the cooldown of Sword, the little bit of flight speed on Sword as well. They are trying to opt for Eevee. That's a good point to be made too as well. Uh, I mean, Pear Dog. I mean, uh, Pear Doggo. Sorry, I'm gonna come. On. I'm gonna just call him Doggo from now on. The blink in, ends up going in. He's trying to get some shots onto Ash. Not finding any damage thanks to the shield, but him and Atlas are holding up the flank. Not really much going on. 21% on the point. This could go either way still. I think they're playing their composition pretty well so far. They don't have as much of a ranged, ranged comp as Cyclone do. Right, right. So they're just trying to get close and kind of force them out, get them into their comfort zone. But it looks oh, like nice. looks like they're actually finding the pick on Yui, trying to come in and touch the point. Might have been going a little early. Two going their way, too. This is looking great for bust down so far. Nice job. Two down on... Yeah, you said it perfectly, actually. Two down are on the side of Cyclone. We see that... Pick. That doggo is really going in the back. Manages to, cure, manages to kill Scarcity. He is trying to kill the Grover. Does find it. And Parrish actually finds not one, but two. Ash and Grover go down. Now Doggo's going to try and put some pressure on this Leon. And they have the first point already on Frog Hall. A really strong start from Bust Down, too. I, I was actually, the Eevee doesn't have a lot of splash, so the Grover jumping, since they can't really. The, it's, right, right, right. <laughs> the splash was, he was getting self healed through the splash. I found that pretty funny. But Emmerfish, some great poke in the front, finding two. Oh, Yui getting a little over aggressive in the front again as well. Great pick for them. They're, they're kind of disconnected. The rest of the team is so far back, right, he's just right. dying in main. Yeah, perish, man. Parish and uh, this Eevee, and, oh man, but Atlas can't help himself. He already used the rewind. The cooldown was gone. Eevee manages to blink back on point. One is saved, but the other goes down. Doggo forced all the way back. Minute 50 on the clock still. Still have some time to push in, but if there's one thing it is that I know about Frog, oh, the movement. Very, very impressive from Doggo, though. I, I want to see what happened with his thumbstick when he did that. I'm, yeah, I'm right? really yeah, curious yeah, yeah, as, to, yeah. as to the manipulation that happened there. But yeah, that, that rewind is oh, a little bit again? early. Oh. Forced out again. I will note what level of percussion he's using to get the, the level of boot, because I noticed that Atlas went very, very far. I'm curious about his build there. Looks like percussion two. Pretty uh, pretty yeah. normal for Frog Isle, I think, uh, just to get those extra kills on the side. The rest of the load are looking pretty standard. Vanguard high two, not a card I personally prefer, but it helps them stay alive a lot if they want to get very aggressive. Yeah, it seems like... I think you brought it up like perfectly. Buzzdown doesn't really have the range to deal with that. Having 
really just having Fnatic being able to go in and just apply that certain dominance, but through time and space, does find scarcity, actually. Just interrupt me in the middle of what I'm saying, Era. No problem whatsoever. You do manage to find a kill. The Shoulder Bash comes through. Gets a little bit of damage off onto the Atlas. Not enough to kill him. Whirlwind comes through. Three Ultimates still online for Cyclone. They just got the Dome Shield of Sir Dominus to follow up. The, the shield on the Vivian actually protects her from the stun from yep. the Ash, but the Assert Dominance is going to be, I think, too much for them to deal with. The, she's right in their face. Oh, man. Now, they, if they can't get the burst damage from their close range composition, their composition isn't going to do much of anything. Paradago is going to try to get away, but at this point, it might just be a stagger if he's gonna, not going to be able to get out. Yeah, I mean, he's trying his best to... He's trying his best to maneuver really like around the point. He's trying to find out where he can actually go in. He's going in, but he's not getting as much as he needs to, especially with the rest of his team that has to follow up with him. Not necessarily downplaying them, but he has to go in as hard as he possibly can. He's looking for a shot. He's trying to he's trying to find out. He's trying to open up an opportunity yeah. for them to go in right now. Yeah, and I'm not sure he's going to be able to find it through the Grover healing. His damage isn't consistent enough to really confirm a kill, unless he get, really gets on there, but Scarcity puts on enough damage, scares him enough to back away. Cyclone, get this hold, and I, this it mids, the mids are going to look a little better for bust down, so this, yeah. this could be good for them moving forward. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you look at the KDs here, we have 3 one like 0 3 on the Al not the Alice, sorry, the Terminus. <laughs> Don't forget that he is still putting in work, but he does have five assists there. Mm -hmm. He does have five kill participation that is currently there for his team. Score is 1-1, one, one, though, and it's about even, you know, so on, so on, so forth. I mean, I'm not. there's not really anything too crazy going on. The ultimates are online. We'll have to see what they have for this fight, though. One thing is the Eevee hasn't died yet also, so it, right, it's yeah. very hard for, I think, some of the players using, using the controls to react to the Eevee blinking. And if they're ready for it, it could be good, but she's kind of blinking erratically, messing up her timings, messing around with her timings, making it really hard for them to be pre-aiming, pre-firing. Plus, the heal on Flicker is keeping her alive a lot. I'm surprised to see the, the amount of pressure that the Eevee's putting on here. And it looks like their mid's actually going to start the same way. Exile coming in, too, to give them some free ground. Yeah, here we go. Doggo's going to soar all the way. Hey, and he's going to blink in, puts down the Ice Storm. He wants to make sure he can get Leon. The Enlightenment comes through to give himself some CC immunity. Yui does kill Terminus. There is one individual down on the side of Bust Down, but he used the reanimate. No one goes down because of that, though. However, he is still back alive, and they are ready to fight. Yeah, the Terminus is actually super low after the reanimate. They couldn't find the kill. He had just a little bit of Siphon left, stuck in the corner, trying to use the Stasis Field to stay alive. But the Nanix is putting on a ton of pressure with this Ash on top of him. His Siphon actually, he catches him jumping up. Oh, they get two man. picks. This is looking great for Bust Down. What a smart reanimation. Great peel to keep the Terminus alive. They're going in with the Crush combo too through with the time, through time and space. space. Gets the Grover. Bust Down having control of the point right now after those ultimates. Very nicely done just from Bust Down. In general, I mean, like, they. They utilize that through time and space so well. We see that Styles is com coming up right now. They had two individuals that were down on Cyclone. The Barrage comes through. Doggo taking a few shots here and there. Both him and Leanne, the rest of them are trying to at least try and get some damage on the Terminus with him not having a reanimate. But Bust Down does capture the point. Scarcity shooting a little bit. He's trying to see if he can get a kill on Terminus, but Terminus barely lives. The Whirlwind comes through. Two down on the side of Cyclone. And now Bust Down's looking pretty good. They have the momentum and they're in the driver's seat right now. Emmerfish putting on so much pressure. Oh, Atlas man. just cannot oh, be man. stopped. 50% speed from beyond the veil means you can chase any kill you want. Mm. Bust Down had a great post fight on that mid. They Zone. They knew the only person who could touch was going to be the Ash. They got the Barrack low. Right, right, right. He, if he used his cooldowns to get in, he would have. He wouldn't have made it. They put a lot more pressure on Fanatics. Fanatics couldn't dash in. Died right after oh, the cap, man. and they just got that confirmed so easily for them. Yeah, the the Eevee just blinks in, drops the Ice Storm. They do find a kill onto Fanatics. There are three of them that are currently in the on the right side, up on the high ground. But both Atlas and Eevee are applying that pressure. Welsh. Doesn't find the kill, but Scarcity cleans it up. Doggo gets the kill on Scarcity, but not before Kings tries to even it up. A soul for a soul, as Thanos would say. They do end up trading one for one on that side. They do have two that are down. Bust down going to be able to try and make it all the way black, all the way back, really. Cyclone's going to try and push in and do what they can. Perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced. As all things should as all be. Things should be. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard for Bust Down to get to this point. They kind of have to get a pick. They had Fanatics at the start, but it wasn't really enough. Exile, kind of blocked by the shield, going to have to hold it for most of the duration. Probably just going to get yep, the 40% refund. Great poke there. That's kind of what they have to rely on, because yeah. they don't have much range across the rest of their comp. Either Emmerfish getting Atlas poke, or they're going to have to go for the stun on the Ooh. Shatterfall from their Terminus. The Void Grip coming through, trying to make sure they can kill Barry. They don't find it. Welsh does 
it's fine. Emperor though, he doesn't get the kill on the Atlas, but here comes Eevee. She's moving all the way in the back. He's just warm hold a blink back as well. A few shots from Doggo are going to get things started. And not only that, but lower a few individuals. Enlightenment comes through. Doesn't find anybody. Not going to be enough, but assert dominance. The whirlwind is up as well as through time and space, and Ice Storm is steadily building. Yeah, forward positioning by Bust Down. They made it through the the uh, the trenches, I guess. They yeah, were yeah, get yeah, close yeah, yeah. enough where Paradoggo can get good poke on his EV. Emmerfish actually managed to make it up on the side, putting down a stasis field. That should put on a lot of pressure, but it looks like they don't care about the Natics. Oh, through man. time and space, find scarcity in the back line too. Really solid. I think the Ice Storm confirmed the first kill as well. They trade out the point tech. No tanks alive for Cyclone. I don't think they have a chance to contest with Emmerfish so forward. Yeah, they're having to fully force off the back a little bit. The Deja Vu getting the AoE rewind. He manages to only find Grover though. 3-1 is the score. Bust down, do have the lead. Cyclone only one point on the board, but the damage here says a lot already. Yeah, really traded back and forth. I mean, it's basically a checkerboard all the way down until the bottom three on Cyclone. The biggest thing is Victor is below Ash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, think yeah. about yeah. that last game we just saw. I mean, we can talk about Prosper Logic as much as we want, but that was a that's a Very crazy performance lead. compared yeah. to what you'd normally expect a Victor to do on this map. They're just playing their cover really effectively. Mm -hmm. And honestly, look at their comp. What is the what's the Victor going to be shooting into most of the time? Right, exactly. The term siphon, the stasis field. Mm -hmm. They Evie's not going to be peeking them. Right, right, she's, right, She's right. just going to be hiding and using that cover. So, really, I think effective composition and great use of natural cover by Bust Down to win these mid fights. Yeah, they're doing a really good job. And on top of that, I mean, like, they won't really have much ground as they're trying to cover. They do have the advantage in terms of range, though, I believe. Really, they're just trying to push in air all the way in the back, trying to give some healing each out, but. Air. <laughs> I just saw him, like, his whole body yeah, just adults. fly back immediately because it was stunt, like he was... The stuntman pulled the string right, behind yeah. him <laughs> like and the pulled cartoon. him back to the choke. Yeah, yeah, just like the cartoon, just yanks him back. The Vivian does go down. Scarcity ends up killing Styles. Now that Cyclone's in control here, they're going to try and force Bust Down at least a ba just back just some. They have to find momentum, especially when you have a 3-1 lead, and the momentum they will find one for one once again. Doggo goes down, followed by Welsh on either team. And man, oh man, this fight is not in yet. Yeah, 70% on the point. Barrage is there, and just as I say that, he does end up using it. He's trying to find somebody, but Styles is body blocking him. He cannot get through him to use the Barrage. And because of that, they are able to kill Scarcity. However, Arivian goes up. How do you say his name? Arivian? I, I think, I want to say Arivian. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, correct me on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I mean, gosh, man, it's like, Cyclone itself is, they're fighting back, but the thing is that I don't think it's going to be just enough in general for them to be able to do. The banishment comes through to make sure they can't get back either. And then Leanne's going to try and slide on, but it's not going to be enough. Nicely done in general from Bust Down. It was looking pretty one-sided to Cyclone for a second. Yeah, honestly, I can't say enough about what Emmerfish did on that mid. We didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to mention it, but he actually came up through the danger side almost uncontested, mm -hmm. and he got he was getting kill after kill, and nobody nobody could back up, so all the right, pressure right, right, from right. front from Styles was just was just completely completely stifled by Emmerfish being behind. He even had a stasis field like two feet behind yep. them. They couldn't get through. Yeah, it was... Like, I think you brought up such a good point. It was like the coverage it was that they were using was mm -hmm. enough for them to be able to not only net that win, but it seemed like they had the range advantage with the Leon and just everything, but I think the pressure, combined pressure from Atlas, Eevee, yeah. just too much for them to handle on that flank because you saw them, Atlas, Eevee, both went around the side, the right side, every single time, and because of that, I don't think they were able to really contest that with just the rewind, deja vu, with the blink, and then even here in the stats, you can see that 65,000 damage coming out from Arivian or Arya Van, <laughs> and Doggo, just in general, Aryavan, thank you, okay. Just just in general, from both of them, I mean, they are they both did extremely well, and I really want to see the KDs on their team, though. Yeah, the damage is pretty low across the board. Actually, General's not even dying for Dreams. Wow. I think that just yeah. has to do with the pressure the rest of his team was putting on. Mm -hmm. If Cyclone's getting backed up, trying to find these long angles to deny Doggo more room that he wants, they can't shoot the Genos. And it, it's clear here, just Bust Down were able to apply so much aggression, so much forward momentum for them. There was not much Cyclone could do to answer that. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, like I keep starting it off with I mean the sign because it's like, man, like what do you really say with such a, like a really just a dominant performance? We're gonna see this right this here. This was his flank on the, on yeah, the yeah, final yeah, mid. Yeah, this yeah. was the pressure he was putting on. Look, just diving this Grover in the back line. Nothing they could do to stop him. The Barrack has to move in with the Nanix to touch the point. They can't even kill this Terminus. Bar yeah. One HP plus a reanimate. So much good, I think, ultimate usage by Emmerfish as well, too, with the final exile yeah. in that last fight. Great use of the rewinds in general, just to use it as a CC sometimes. Even with the resilience that Cyclone had, I mean, you can even see he double he double yeah. exiles Yui here, straight through the resilience. Yeah, he 
it's so cool because it was like he knew immediately when Barrett was trying to come back on the point because yeah. he saw the de like he used the banishment, saw the dash, and immediately just exiled it. Yeah, and immediately sent him to the Shadow Realm. No problem whatsoever. He immediately just got banished. The Millennium Puzzle was was right, glowing yeah, yeah, yeah. on Emmerfish's chest, yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> just to prevent himself from really just like, like he. Gosh, man, I mean, like, I'm. There's so many really things good timing. Going on in my, they yeah. had the timing really, yeah. really effective across the board from them. I think they just played it real well. Yeah, they did play it real well. However, we'll see a lot more play coming from them after this break. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Console League. Welcome back in on the back end of a, a bust down win. Not something we saw too much of in the last split. I mean, we saw some good like three ones, I think, Gore. I mean, we Cyclone always came out on top. They were 12 and 0, but yeah. you know, three ones, three twos sometimes, but Cyclone would always win. But that's a start I don't think they maybe were expecting. And I think in fairness for bust down not only winning but i think they've opened up their draft in a way that was never there sure. and that just comes down like atlas vivian genos they all did phenomenally but it's the ev that kind of catches my eye because that's not a typical console pick True. doesn't typically do well when it is picked on console and it hit all the marks it needed to for frog isle to work and honestly dreams on on bust down she's one of the the best support players in the console league and yeah. showing more of that undying this game on the Geno, so so well played by her. Uh, across the board, bust down out of the gate, very hot here. Let's take a look at map number two, see where we're going to head. Cyclone needing to bounce back in this one. It is going to be Bright Marsh. Bust down winning Frog Isle, of course, 4-1. That wasn't even really all that close. I mean, the, the, the sets sometimes can be close, but like I said, Cyclone always on top. But 4-1 for bust down on Frog Isle. Bright Marsh... I mean, like you said, they, they, they showed maybe we'll pull out an EV, yeah. something, something like that. Bright Marsh caters to a lot of the same picks. And it's interesting just because one of the things I expect to see on Frog Isle is like, okay, snipers are going to come through. They didn't come through. This could literally be a run back of the same drafts, and there's no need to really change too much. Right. Of course, if you're Cyclone here, maybe you do want to give up or not give up as much. Like the Genos obviously made a big difference for them on bust down but i think atlas vivian like that that trio combo that mm -hmm. they had really was what just knocked it out of the park i think atlas is really strong just alone i think vivian on console is just strong alone and you gave them damage amp you gave them an eevee that knew what they were doing and it just let them run rampant and there's still a lot honestly available i mean for cyclone yes but but honestly bust down on the opposite side you still have genos you still have Makoa. There's still hell. so so much that you can build a, a team around. Cyclone opting to go Tyra first pick here. Not super surprising. Hunting party so valuable. Of course, a champion that has a lot of that good direct damage that a lot of these teams really lean into. Genos right. Victor, though, you kind of pointed to that uh, prior to game number one. That that combo is, is very scary, and they're going to get yeah. it here. And being able to hold on to that, like Tyra brings a lot to the table in terms of melting front lines. So when you are sure. looking to like, if, depending on where bust down go with it, if they pick like Anara Barrack, if that happens to be something that comes through, if Barrack gets picked here, then Anara plus another tank. Those two are going to die a lot because of Tyra. Yeah. That is just how it's done. But on the other side with Genos Victor, everybody dies really, really yeah. fast, yeah, really, right. really hard. It's a lot of damage to deal with. And Khan, actually, I think for the first time today, largely unbanned in the first set, never yeah. picked. 
Cyclone's going to go the con route this time. Any reason that maybe that jumps out to you? Why my con has not been really all that prioritized? It makes, honestly, less sense to see Terminus more than I'm seeing Khan in my mind sure. because Khan, oh, right. it's a, Khan it's a to mental me hurdle. is like I mean he's he's fat Victor he does the right. like very similar damage he has a 30 round clip and it's going to be full auto in fact I would argue he has better control and deserve to be seen at least on Frog Isle if not right. now alive. coming here Stay close and a lot of the control he's going to bring I think though is set up with Tyra like the damage numbers together mm -hmm. there are going to be insane and there's Makoa Okay. Virtually, uh, yeah, so you know, most of those priority, not, I was going to say all, but that's not, not the case with Atlas being banned out. Half of those high priority, I mean, top tier priority, A-list, S-list, frontliners and, and some of the other metas coming out here in the console league. They're going to round out their lineup with a Grover. So Tyra Barrett, Khan, Makoa, Grover. On paper, I mean, you, you ignore the opposite yeah. side. That scares you. But then you have to remember you're going against the Genos Victor. Does, does Terminus, is that kind of where that draft maybe becomes a little less rock solid to you. I actually like Terminus against this draft. Yeah. I feel like he just having reanimate, like the one thing that makes Terminus good is the same thing that makes Willow good. They have to cluster. They have to kind of clump up if they want the healing. Luckily, they have a little bit to alleviate that with Khan having his own heal and Grover, but it's still a lot of pressure, I think, on Cyclone to perform. Well, they're going to have to uh, perform if they're going to overcome the draft that Bust Down have brought to the table. Game one goes the way of bust down game two well we're gonna have to send it down to your casters to find out perform they shall they already have one score on the one game at least on the board for them we we'll have to see if they can really make a comeback here i mean like it's been going either or like we thought that the other team wasn't really going to be able to fight back as hard as they were like compared to like because like bust down was losing pretty badly at first but then they just flipped the script well, I think they, yeah, they just, they had their mids figured out, and in the end of the game, that's what really matters. I mean, yeah. they did manage to get that conversion, they did cap, but uh, at the end of the game, like, if you cap every, if you cap every mid and lose every push, you still win the game. Well, of course, right? of course. They had the better comp for that, and I mean, in that same vein, I think Cyclone have the better comp for the mids. I think their aggression is really strong, and Terminus, yeah, yeah he's going to be able to buy some time with a siphon against this triple tank composition, but. Hook goes through Siphon. Makoa can just yep. hook you straight through your Siphon. If you're Tyra marked when that happens, you're not going to live very long. Yeah, and I mean, what else can really Terminus do about that, you know? Like, the Siphon's one of his only defensive tools that yeah. he has, other than, like, his slam down, which he can use sort of for mobility to try and get around the point. And just as I say that, immediately, I see Styles' body gets yoinked, just like we just mentioned, the fucking the, the, like cane, the, car the, the cartoon. The yeah. cane off the side of the thing pulls yeah, him Yeah, the cartoon just pulls aside. him directly in, yeah. Just completely... Yeah, with the Mark II, just an immediate yeah. burn. That's what their comp wants to do at this point. That's why they have the Grover. They're going to be moving uh, as a death ball, getting those picks, quick shots. And they have a lot of sustain, too. Th there are mostly Wrecker focused, though. So if this game goes late, Bust Down could have a small advantage with maybe the Willow and Victor bursting down those shields. But oh, wow, a fantastic oh, triple actually man. onto Emmerfish. Denies the touch on the point. Cycle win this first objective on the back of that and on the back of their strong composition. Nice damage coming out from just. I mean, like, can't really say the damage, just really the pressure that Cyclone is applying right now. They're forcing them all the way back. Like, I mean, like, there's the commander's grab coming out from Khan. He's trying to get some damage on an Emperor Fish, but they're body blocking him. He can't really get past, but Willow does save the Ash's life by managing to kill Khan. They were trying to burn him down as fast as they were, as fast as they could, really, without their DPS. It's not going to be enough. Here comes the Fae Fly to try and finish this off. Yeah, quick, trying to get a conversion here on Welsh Mania. Barely misses, but does get the, the fight in the end. Cyclone just weren't clumped up as they needed to be. I think they were just too scared of the Willow, but because of that, the Vortex Grip stun onto the Ash was not able to be converted into a kill. They just yeah. didn't have the damage there. Their Tyra, I think, was on the other side of the oh, map. Man. Quick spin in and hook onto Emmerfish, but he should be able to back out of this. Yeah, no body block comes yeah. in. He can rotate back to his team. We're going to settle down to another little bit of the stalemate here. Lucky thing about that was that Ash's wall pretty much covers most of that little small yeah. room area in there. So he was able to at least dodge most of it, but can't dodge that hook at least. The Natic's moving all the way in. He wants to get the kill, and my, my god, he does it. He actually gets the hook, finishes him off, and now we're looking at Willow to be the next one. The menu Welsh goes down, but not before Willow gets killed as well. Minute 10 on the clock, two down on bust down. We have three ultimates online, almost four really for Cyclone. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to want to use here. Maybe uh, I could see Crossfire Dome Shield maybe being used. You probably want to save your Ancient Range for mid 
just to make a bunch of room. But King's here poking on the left. Looks like they got a hook on the side. Oh, just missed. They have plenty of time, though, to wait. They can wait for a hook if they want to. Welsh Mania going to back up, get re-healed. Oh, 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 my great goodness. Great grenade, actually, from Arivon. Finds yeah. that kill with Emmerfish diving in. They want to try to convert this fight, not give him a chance to, to capture this here. He's putting up pressure, but none of his team is able to follow Oh, up. man. The hook cancels it, too, and now Cyclone's going to try to push this in. Emmerfish goes a little bit too ham, a little bit too far into the back line. He ends up getting killed, punished for that. And now Victor goes down as well. Yeah, I was trying to watch to see. I didn't know he was actually going to be able to make it out. Fayfly goes through, but it just seems like Cyclone. Now they're in the driver's seat. Now they have such a commanding lead right there. Commander grab Commander grabs goes through. And because of that, though, they were able to push the payload into where it needs to go. Yeah, the Fae Flight committed there. I mean, it's a pretty fast charging ultimate, so not that bad. But that, that Vortex Grip, he's actually running the stun legendary on the Vortex Grip. So when you get someone, they're going to be stunned for about two seconds. Uh, guarantees that Emmerfish didn't have a chance to ult even if he wanted to. You know, assert dominance. It's, dominance definitely not asserted there. No chance for him to pull that off. Cyclone takes this up 2-0. Uh, looking into the ultimates here, they do have assert dominance and barrage still. Uh, but overpowered a counter on the other side. Cyclone have a lot of pretty game-changing ultimates with their ancient range of their overpower. I'm curious to see how they take this fight. Yeah, I mean, like the... Actually, Terminus is below damage. Well, you're below <laughs> yeah, I was just about to mention that. He's swinging into a lot of shields. That's he the is, he yeah, he that's the problem. He can't get close because then he'll just right. get hooked and immediately burn down. So maybe not the best draft for him. We'll have to see how they take it going into this next mid fight. Yeah, I was just, I was actually just about to mention how, like, it's going to be hard for him to be able to break through all those shields from Akoa, from Barrick, from Khan. Four ultimates online for Cyclone. Two online for Bust Down. But the thing is, is that that Ancient Rage... And that dome shield is going to be a very huge factor, along with overpower, really. Like, we, like all of these ultimates have their place at the right time. Overpower did just get missed, though. The Ancient Rage coming out, assert dominance into the back line. It looks like it isn't able to find a kill. Crossfire coming in to find some confirms. Actually, Vortex Grip straight oh, out of it. Oh, man. The assert dominance accomplishes basically nothing. The Natic's diving the side with a great hook onto the Terminus. They should oh, find this gosh. kill. The aggression's going to keep coming in. I don't know if they have enough time to touch if they get staggered out here in the end of this fight. That is incredibly fast. It was like the blink of an eye, and all of them just got completely erased. The Natic's diving to the back line with a shell spin, getting two kills. They're looking for a third. They do find it and now Cyclone already with three points in a sub 10 minute game five minutes 30 seconds in and they're already this far ahead yeah this is a statement they are really saying like oh yeah yeah you won that last map but uh where are the ones you went to land right yeah <laughs> yeah if, in case you forgot we are a pretty good team and right. their comp if they win early I mean they have a pretty decent amount of CC with the with the uh Vortex Grip Con that's guaranteed pick more or less. They have a lot of shields. So if they end this game fast, the utility from Bust Down won't be there. They, they if with Wrecker and Resilience, their comp kind of falls off. But if this is a 4-0, they're gonna have no time to get that online. Yeah, I heard the Faith Flag go Triple off. Wrecker. He's gonna try and make sure that they actually it, like, like he is actually going to get some damage off onto the people that's on the ground on the lower level. He's taking shot after shot. Doggo's trying to go in. Well, not really go in. He's really just trying to find some worthwhile damage so that the rest of them can't push in. Cyclone's trying their best to try and maneuver, trying to do what they can. Barrick just getting melted. And like you mentioned, there are three wreckers, right, yeah. on the side of Cyclone. So they're, well, not, sorry, on the side of Bust Down. So they are just breaking those shields. It's so hard for them to push forward. Pear was actually really scared to move there. He was yeah. very far back. There's only Tyra that can really deal with him. Maybe Maybe some con pressure, but oh, here it was we go. clearly enough. Dome Shield coming in to stem the, to stem the tide a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Emmerfish countered out of his dash, takes oh, down by goodness. Welsh. Fnatic's pushing on the side here. Fantastic player, fantastic pressure from him. Scarcity finding two. They're going to have to use the reanimate, but there's going to be so much damage. Going to hook, maybe going to go through the siphon. Not going to need it. You can't cover every man, angle with that anymore. Oh, man. It's going to go to Cyclone 4 0. What a. What do you say? That was what so that? quick. Oh, really? It was that a was statement. So, that was, it was a statement. That was a statement. what it was. I mean, they just lost that map. It was closer than that one was, but yeah. they came back. They put their foot down. They also reminded everybody that Triple Tank is pretty good. I yeah. mean, we've yeah. seen Triple Tank historically a lot. I remember my last, my first console game I ever did was, I, I think I saw Triple Tank almost every other game yeah. on the desk at the uh, console wars last year. So reminding everybody that it's good, yeah. reminding everybody that they are a team to be feared. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the post game here real quick and see what these... See what it did that Cyclone was just so dominant oh. with, man. Like, look at the damage. Not only Styles, man, and it, it's so it, – it's it's low. Like, Frontliners aren't supposed to do yeah. that much damage anyway, but it is still low. It shows how hard it was for him to get past the Makoa, get past the Khan, get past the Barrett. Like, as Terminus, that was so hard for him to go do go 0-5, though, as well. 
See, the, their composition doesn't have a lot of spam, and he's right, running right, Strength right. of Stone 5, which right. is a card that gives you damage reduction based on the amount of charges you have mm -hmm. stored. So his build was kind of set for a composition that he wasn't really playing into. Yeah. I guess. He, he There was no way for him to do damage. Aryavan did a ton. I think it was around 80k, but versus triple tank, I don't think it's going to do that much, especially with a man like Fnatic's applying so much yeah. pressure that he was. I mean, we're going to take a look at the replay right here and just see what it was that he was doing. A double kill already, man. Like, his positioning is so good as well. That was the commander's grab that forced them off of the point that netted them the second point of Bright Marsh. Another one just... Between him, between Makoa, the Nadix, and this Khan, they're working together so officially, so well. Kings and the Nadix both just rushing people down, forcing the Ash out of her assert dominance, forcing them in a position they don't want to be in. The hooks, the commander's grabs, just the stuff. Yeah. Everything is so efficient. Yeah, a lot of CC, just yeah. very well, a well oiled machine. Basically, mm -hmm. Cyclone was that game. Then actually, even at the uh, even at the last land, the MSI, he was a player that impressed me because he yeah. was putting up great numbers, putting out a lot of pressure. And I think he was one of the only players on their team that was using a controller at MSI. Oh wow! And I remember him just looking really dominant on mm -hmm. Ash and on different tanks across those games. So not surprised he's popping off. I'm not surprised Cyclone in general oh, walked yeah. away from that one with a win. Yeah, and walk away they did. We thought that Bust Down was going to be the ones that applied as just as much pressure as they did last game. But Cyclone, not necessarily surprising everybody, but clapping back a little bit, showing that they, like you said, they, they made a statement. Tune in more. Tune in for more after this break, though. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins console league. Thanks for sticking around, guys. 1-1 one, one now in the split. That's the cycle, and I think we all maybe expected to see in game number one. Dominant, well-oiled, whatever you want to call it. They did not skip a beat on Bright Marsh in game number two. Gormizer, is it time to put Terminus away? Do we, do we close the book on Terminus? Because <laughs> of the three games we've seen him... That was easily like the worst. It was easily the worst, right? <laughs> but we've seen two games that were not good, one game that was passable... Is it time to just just move on? Move on from the Terminus? I move on. Not just because like the stats were against him. Right. But you pointed it out he had 963 credits. Now, the stats at the end of the game are the amount of credits I believe that you've gotten in the game. Yes. So that's uh not even digit. really enough to that's yeah. not even enough to get a tier three item. Well, that's not, enough to get a tier two maybe <laughs> cauterize. Well there's no uptime. I mean there's no uptime uh, in the game to, to harvest the credits. So triple digits there for the terminus. Uh, map two is in the books. Let's see what map three has in store for us this time around. Stone keep is where we're going to head. Lots of Makoa today. I mean, notably, it's it's an interesting shift for people that have just started watching this second split. You know, you, you come from the PPO on Thursday and Friday and see the way that meta is where Makoa, Atlas, Khan, you know, maybe a third flex ban here and there. But but this Talus is, is usually perma banned. One of Victor, Vivian, Tyra normally banned out as well. And that opens up a lot of the front line to, to some of those S tier picks in other, in other leagues. Yeah, and that honestly is the, I want to say the thing we saw that let Bust Down be very successful in game one and the thing we saw that made them very unsuccessful in game two was like the the power picks and where they went like makoa getting banned out here i think which is very very not only applicable but appropriate to be yeah. able to do but like tyra in that last game was good because they wanted triple frontline they're like you know what we'll first pick this because she's already really strong 
and it's a counter to what we're about to run against you. So no matter sure. what, we're running like we're we're running rampant with this. Genos, you get rid of coming. I want to say some of the other problems. Like Genos is usually really good if you can't run like a triple front line into it, and you make them a little bit more uncomfortable here on bust down. Okay, well, I was going to bring up Torvald because we hadn't Torvald. seen him a lot today. I mean, I saw on Twitter maybe some sort of gentleman's ag agreement not to pick or ban him in set one. Not sure how all that plays out. But we are going to get our first look of the split at Torvald here. And that's kind of the weird balance where what he brings with field study is so important, that, that extra damage boost on everything in the kit. But you're eliminating effectively one of your frontliners from yeah. the game, if you will. I mean, he's still there. He's still, you know, he still has some abilities that can make a difference. Hyper Beam every once in a while nice will really be a game-changing play. But it's, with a lot of the teams, even in the PPL, it's like, who do you take away? Do you do you eliminate your, your point tank, your off tank? Which way do you yeah. go with it? Pairing it with a Vivian, though, is pretty scary. It shifts the dynamic you away. Like, the meta we're in here. is very much won by, like, your flex, your flank, and your off tank. Sure. And they will be the driving force. Everyone else is kind of like the backup to that. Now you're looking at with Torvald, it shifts it away from that even further to, okay, you're the DPS, kill him. Kill him dead. Kill him <laughs> as best as you can because that's what we need. So coming into this, I think, you know, you're looking at Vivian. Saris, I'm a little on the fence about yep. just as uh, entirely as a whole. As, as a person? No, as a healer. Going into another <laughs> another DPS. As a, I, I mean, generally as a person, too. She's kind of, We're unsure. I think, literally the embodiment of the abyss. There's hope yet. Oh, gaze into it. And so, you know, if, if she had it her way. Pretty, you know, I can't. Her eyes are blindfolded. That's true. Probably because they look all demon-y because she's evil. <laughs> they look all demon-y. Yeah, I don't want to know what demon-y looking eyes look <laughs> like. Yes. Bust down, though. Atlas is glowing red eyes. I don't know where we stand. That's a little less scary. I don't know. Atlas may be good. He has a blue cape He's on. A good boy. You know, normally that means good things. Victor Grover and Nara Atlas and Leon for bust down. Very good. Very cohesive lineup. Here, you're looking at Stay Torvald, Vivian, Saris, Khan, and Ash on the opposite side. So going with that triple front line, if you consider it that way, Torvald kind of, like I was saying, it kind of takes away from the front line. Well, let's just eliminate a damage dealer and stick another front liner in there, I guess. Hey kind of works like I'm interested to see what Cyclone do with this but like you're pocketing Vivian with those bubbles and just really hoping she can do something and I guess Khan and Ash float that line but yep. I don't know how I like it well his role is bubble <laughs> giver and he'll look to do a lot of that for Cyclone here in game number three both these teams looking to take a lead in the set how will it play out Stefan Kresnik tell us well we'll try and tell you as best as we can with a bot on the team at least the bubble bot yeah the bubble actually that was his mother's maiden name oh bubble bot bubble, bubble giver Bubble Giver. Well, what, what Dave said before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arian Bubble Giver. Arian Bubble Giver. was actually her first like name. I, have you, clearly, you have not read the lore. No, I apologize for the reading. I, I apologize <laughs> to everyone at home. I have not read the Paladin's lore for Torvald's mother's <laughs> maiden name. Very, very in depth stuff. Looks like yeah. nothing too surprising here. I mean, Saris came out a lot on console, I think, in general. Even sometimes as DPS. Like, DPS errors was, was a thing that was done in a bit. But coming back as a healer here for triple tank, which like, says to me, again, similar to Grover, they're going to want to be clumped up because of that group begun. heal that she has. Uh, but we know that the focus is going to be all yeah. the bubbles on that Vivian. Yeah, we already see them apply, really applying pressure, but they're fighting up on this bridge. It's something you see a lot of teams do on Stone Keep. To be able to have that high ground, have that control is so important. They're already going up there. The shots are flying, man. With Infrared, she's just behind everybody. He's not, no one's even really paying attention to him other than the Khan. And because of that, Kings does end up going down. He jumps right onto the point. Now they're down a man. They're going to be forced back and away. The rewind, Deja Vu playing such a huge role in that. Now Fnatic's looking pretty low too. Gets picked off as well. Now he's staggered, gonna have to find a way back. 45% onto the point for bust down. They, that first pick was like, man, like them not looking at Atlas yeah. was like, that, that, that was. They just missed yeah. that he kited I over mean, the side. They, they, right, missed, yeah, the, yeah, they yeah. missed that he kited over the side. He's still applying some pressure here, getting nullified, so he can't rewind. Manages to live through it without the damage there. Should get the kill on Torvald, because he's not getting there serious healed here. Nice. Fantastic headshot by Emmerfish. Bust down taking this, but honestly, Cyclone just walked into that stasis field. They gave that yeah. stasis field so much value. They, they let that thing set up there the whole time. Now that they could do anything about it, but they didn't hide. They just let him rain down through it. Yeah, I mean, the damage just was so surprising on the side of Bustdown. I mean, 
they really came out like on top of the bridge and just emperish with everything. They were just throwing everything immediately at Cyclone. It was too much pressure for them to handle. The wall comes out as well. They aren't really there to be able to capitalize on it, but it is enough to try and stagger him. He still is in a bad spot. He has to find a way to back up. Barrage coming through. He's getting a couple shots off. Nothing too crazy though. Uses all three. The ultimate gets completely reset. 1% on the point. Well, not 1% on the point, but 1% on his ultimate, I should say. King's in a bad spot. He has to turn Sword of Bash right out of there. 1,000% healing. The overpower yeets him right off the side. Victor's now off of the point. And will that be the Alice as well? It is! The double kill coming out from Fnatic's. Nice awareness from him in general on Cyclone, but he goes down finally. And they're still pushing the payload with a minute 25 on his left. Yeah, Vortex, left. Vortex Script confirms that kill, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, no resilience yet, so it's going to get its maximum value. And Cyclone are going to settle in a little bit here. That cart, they... they Bustown got a little bit forward ahead of that cart. That's why they weren't able to find any of those kills when they did wall him off. Yeah. But uh, things are kind of settling down here. Emmerfish looking to take upper. Kings, it looks like disengaging from up top. Doesn't want to be in that Atlas's face too much. They, well, ideally, what they want to do is poke to force that Atlas's stasis field out, and then I think they can take an engagement where their Vivian's going to do a lot more. But oh, Seismic man. Crash coming in on the side. Can they follow up on this? No, I don't think they'll be able to. Styles goes down. He does let the ult fly loose. Double kill for Welsh. The ultimate's just coming through now. Enlightenment backs up in the corner, but him and Torvald such a bad spot. A nice bubble, the bubble bot coming through. Triple kill for him. Now he's gonna try and go for Victor. Now he has to reload. Shoulder badge just bops him right in his mouth. He ends up getting erased as well. Three members on bust down. Really four of them, but three of them were currently respawning. Four of them did go down, and now they're already forced back. Assert dominance. The Sentinels are back up along with the Sarah's ultimate. And then the hyperdrive for Torvald is coming through as well soon. Yeah, the hyperbeam's up for Torv. I it usually only gets used on last pushes or last defenses because it's not super effective on mid. Actually, I don't know if they have time to talk about Ooh. that because they call out Kings with a great deja vu around the corner. Stasis field to buy some time. They can't put on any more damage. I want to see how they work this into a conversion. What are they willing to use? Yeah. They have Whirlwind, Barrage, and Exile. What will they be able to find with this? Welsh a little bit forward. No bubble. Actually, oh, they got the second bubble again, but nobody on bust down's even able to touch the point in mid. Yeah, no one really went on there. I don't even know if there was somebody there, but before we look at that, I really want to go over. This is awesome. The force push off the map. Followed by, followed by the Atlas getting a little bit too close. The Commander's Grab, for those of you that don't know, gives a two-second stun. With if the you, Vortex Grip talent. Yeah, with, with the Vortex Grip talent. Yeah, if you take that talent, yes. that ends up, it ends up allowing them to be stunned. So that's why Atlas wasn't able to rewind when he was thrown off the map. He couldn't actually do anything because he was stunned. And you mentioned a point. Resilience isn't online yet. Yeah. But his cards really are just like, they're, they're all about the damage reduction, all about the healing, the health. Just having those cooldowns up so he can constantly pop them out is going to be really important. Yeah, it's part about kind of chaining those grabs together. You're not going to yeah. get a full reset on it, but if you do get a kill, you're going to get like a 25% reduction on not only your grab, but your shout as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of sustain for him. And let's see, how will they play around the stasis field this time? Looks like they're going to use their shield to try to buy some time through it. It is yeah. down now, but Barrage is coming in to buy even more time. They're still pretty clumped. How much can they get with this? Looks like not too much. The assert dominate oh, stuns him and cancels the ultimate. Fantastic pressure from Kings. Tries to find the Grover. He gets bubbled out, but that means no bubbles on the damage dealers. Dude, they already pushed them all the way back. They were waiting just a little bit longer than last time and seems to pay off Grover and Leon are both forced back they but the headshots are coming through but Doggo gets a little bit too greedy Welsh punishes him for that the whirlwind comes through they want to be able to fight back Deja Vu comes back as well forces him all the way back up top he's going to draw right back down and bust down is still forced to back up Wow, what a duel by Welsh Mania. Wins that with 20 HP remaining. Dream's actually finding a poke with the Goverax. Thing is, Cyclone can't get on the point. There's just so much poke yeah. coming in from Bustdown. They're managing to get on now after finding some picks, but Bustdown will be able to have a little easier retake, I think, if they can just get damage on the point, force them back, and not let them get that cap time. Yeah, oh, nice wall. The Earthbending's too strong on the side of Anara. always. She has to force them. She has to back off, but she can't make it. The wall being so pivotal in that kill right there. Doggo finds not one, but two. Welsh Media and Kings go down. Grenade follows up. Yui gets just deleted as well, just from the grenade. And now the rest of them forced back. Now that Cyclone, well, really, now that Bust Down has the momentum change, mm -hmm. now they're going to hold this high ground. Now they're going to hold this bridge. Now they're the ones in the driver's seat. Yeah, Cyclone, looks like they're stacking here on the left to try to find that space. That's kind of what you're going to have to do with this composition. Tor Vivian may be playing alone, but the rest of the team's going to have to move as a unit together. Hyperbeam, I think, upper to push them back and deny that peak. They couldn't stop the barrage, though. Looks like more damage came onto Welsh. He manages, oh, or even man. manages to find the kill. He was going to have to basically die to touch the point, but he saves his KD and oh, busts down get that cap. 
Yeah, the Assert Dominance comes through, gets the double stun. Don't know if anybody else will be able to follow up. He tries to ask to push forward, does get the kill onto the Victor. Grover and Victor are both down at the Nanax and Kings once again. The second time I've mentioned these two together are just tearing it up right now. They get a double kill and then they end up killing somebody as well. Thanks to Welsh, Emmerfish, go Emmerfish goes down but not before he kills the Khan, not before he kills the Fanatics. Yeah, it looks like they're settling back down in this church here too after those picks. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be too far in the left because they don't want to let the cart get moved. So oh, their yeah. poke isn't really that great. Vivian's pick is poke is okay, but her range, it, it's just not as good as the other one. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hold here kind of tight. Although King's actually getting got a little oh, overzealous. Man. The rest of his team completely left him. I'm not sure if that was a communication error on their part, but they're going to try to trade it out here to make up for it. Oh, oh, Welsh actually might find this Grover, the Force of Nature bubbles, barely saving him. Uh -oh. But the Rewind's going to make sure he dies too. Oh, he might as well just go all for it. I respect that from Welsh. I'm surprised he didn't die a lot sooner. If he would have killed that Grover, that would have been crazy. Commander's Grab ends up coming through and he gets the stun off as well. They do find the kill. Fanatics and the rest of them are trying to fight back so hard. Bust down, trying to make sure they can get something. Doggo goes down as well to the Ash on the side, forcing the rest of Bush down. Bush down. Interesting. Bush, bush down. down. First, first, forcing the rest of Bush down back and off of the point. I, I like that name better, actually. Yeah, Bush down. It's very unique. Yeah, I it feel is. Like that's something that, that Yeti and their logo would say. Right, yeah. It's true. I mean, uh, maybe I'm just thinking of like the Monster Zinc Yeti. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> King's top left putting on a little bit of pressure. Has to dash out. Smart by him. Doesn't want to get left alone by his team again. They can't hold two forward because of all the poke. Ooh. Emmerfish going to find some charge Atlas shots. Maybe use some record of or bust down the shield up yeah. top. I used it. I was hoping I would at least once <laughs> still find some pressure up top, but the Ash is kind of trading him out, and his DPS isn't with him anymore. Man. So he's still going to win this trade, though. Atlas's damage is pretty powerful. It's like... Two of these tanks are currently fighting over the top low, and I'm glad that we're actually watching this because it's like two people trying to hit each other with pool noodles. Like, it's not I really, like, making much of a dent, but they're trying super hard to try and get it's somebody. Still, it's, it's just as important, though. It, yeah, it looks it silly, is. but it, that area being controlled is so important for both compositions, right. I think. Because if, if Bust Down gets top right, they get that poke angle. They're going to get a, almost a free, I think, capture because they're going to get spam on the card. Styles oh, couldn't find the cover, couldn't wall himself off in time. Bubbled Welsh Mania puts on a little bit too much damage for an R to go through, especially Ooh. without the Mother's Grace up. The grenade gets thrown over, man. That was such a good grenade. 70 health being left onto the Vivian. Welsh doesn't go down, but he has to be forced to retreat. Sarah's healing being enough, but it looks like the Victor's trying to come around, but Welsh just too much. That Torval bubble mixed with that damage from Vivian is just too much. The Nyx gets a kill as well as Welsh, and now Doggo's going to go down as well. Anara being forced back. Styles is looking to try and live as long as he can, but it doesn't matter. Can't live up to the name. He's trying to make sure that he can live, but the rest of them are just getting wiped out. And because of that, Cyclone is able to defend. After that second pick, since they're running the, top, the double tank composition, yeah. that was basically just running the numbers. Right, right, down right. the checklist at that point. Triple tank, there's too much health to really burn through, especially with Torvald giving extra sustain to the other tanks. And they're just like, all right, next. Yeah, right. Number 35, please. Yeah. <laughs> next. And, and there was really not much else going on at that point. I, I, I wanted to mention earlier the itemization, right? Mm -hmm. The Wrecker is obviously going to be very powerful into a triple shield tank comp with right. Torvald, Khan, and Ash. Oh, geez, but Cauterize coming online for the triple tank composition. You can see all the Wrecker, by the way, on yeah. down side. Quad Wrecker. Um, the Cauterize coming online is almost just as important, I think. Of course, yeah. Because of the Grover healing. Five, I mean, Grover brings four, a decent amount of damage, but three, his utility two, is healing. Mm -hmm. His ultimate is healing. If you shoot a Cauterize, if you shoot an ult in Grover, when you have cauterized three, he, it's basically like he's not there at all. Right, yeah. It, it's it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, too, because it's like prioritizing these cauterizes is like they don't really have a lot of shields that they can break through anyway on bust down side, right? So the cauterize is the obvious answer to go to on Cyclone side. But it just having so much utility, the whirlwind comes through as well, trying to counter the assert dominance. Doesn't get CC immune. He wants to make sure that he can at least live to provide that healing. And now the fight's just breaking out. The Sarah's oh, the enlightenment, the everything. How many ults are gonna fly through in this fight? Cyclone has to back off. They're really looking really, really low. They can't fight back. They do get wiped on that fight. They're being forced back. Welsh trying to wait for the rest of his team to come up. They're slowly respawning. The point is a capture, only 36% for all that. Bust Down's mids are really smart. I mean, they can't cap because I think if they lose, if they have, if they don't have everybody up top, right. they will not win that fight. Right, so they right. have to play it like this. Cyclone need to change something up on these mid fights. I get that they need to control Ooh. the high ground, but oh! what a barrage by Aryavon to find those kills too. They were just a little too clumped. Welshmania wanted some comfort from Bubble Grandpa, but he could not find it. Only the sweet embrace Dude. of death from that Victor barrage. My man's 100 grand, the victor himself. That clutch barrage was so nice. Getting two individuals, a Cyclone, not only forcing the rest of the team to back off, but allowing them to net that point. Victor holding this right, well, 
really should say the, the left side. The left yeah. side to the payload is really being held right now. He's holding this room, this hallway to make sure that, that nobody ground. can really, yeah, to make sure nobody can really get through there. Such good positioning from him and great play coming out from Bust Down. I think Bust Down just, their ultimates are being used really effectively. They know how to counter Cyclone's mid. The Cyclone really isn't changing anything up on these mid fights. They keep taking it the same way and there's just, Nothing they can do, I think, into that stasis field. It's just buying so much time, and Bust Town has all the answers, ultimate-wise. Yeah, I mean, like, they're just starting to run them down. Like, look at, the, like, look at where they're going. Fnatic is trying to make sure he can kill. Battleshot to make himself immune. He needs to kill the victor, but the rewind, not on Atlas's watch. You're not just going to try and rush down victor like that. He's going to make sure he stays alive. The stun does come through. No resiliences, though. It's not going to be enough. Well, actually, do they have a resilience for him? That, that, was, that seemed to be a little bit shorter than the others. Yeah, just result, yeah, they do. Just result they one. Do. Not, not too much of a difference. Right, right, one right. One thing is, it's going to be really hard for him to confirm those kills once that shield is down because they, he doesn't have much cauterize. Only cauterize one. Mm -hmm. They did find the con, though. Leon found an angle here. Bust out have a pretty big advantage playing the stasis field on the cart. Pair and Erevan both in good angles for this to fight. Kings really can't contest the victory at all. He's going to drop and probably go down quickly if he doesn't get his short dominance is, off. There, yeah, the short dominance is there. He does sure it connects. The Styles is trying to live as best he can. The nice goes down, followed by Styles. As well, King's gonna try and get some damage off, trying to get someone to the victor. He's not dying though. King's, however, does get a kill onto Emmerfish. It's gonna force Bust Down off of the point in a way to force them all the way back, not necessarily to their spawn, but at least back up so they can wait for the rest of their team to get back so they can try and push this one I'm gonna be honest. I mean, well, uh, hey, first I'll talk the fight. Amazing yeah. assert dominance that bought so much time. That basically single handedly won the fight. My heart absolutely skipped a beat when he charged away from the payload. I yeah, know there was yeah, no one yeah, that yeah, possibly yeah, yeah. could have, but just like, I've played off tank, I've played main tank, and leaving the cart when it's that close, I'm always just, it doesn't matter how close it really is, but yeah. still, uh, great ultimate usage by Cyclone. They ended up using the overpower two there. Maybe they could have saved it, but they, uh, they're not gonna need it for this fight, though, with the early pick on Styles. Yeah, with him being down, the rest of them don't really have their point tank. Atlas can sort of do it, but he really needs to be able to control that off tank roll, control that high cool ground. Downs. Yeah, it's all about, exactly. That's such a good way to put it. It's all about his cooldowns. He doesn't have the rewind, doesn't have, like, what he needs. He can't really field. stay. Yeah, he can't stay on the point like that. And because of that, they have to back off for that. He tries to go in last minute. And because of that, we're going to go to 3-3 right now. He can't make it back. But one thing it was I noticed here. Okay, before I talk about that, here's the assert dominance. Yeah. The Fantastic Mr. Dominance, he applied a ton of pressure. Just couldn't die, really. I mean, the fact that he was there contesting this entire time. Yeah. Also getting full healed by the Ceres because of the lack of Cauterize on Bust Down side. Mm -hmm. They should be building it now, but they just were not able to burn through him. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for them to find the kills, and you definitely can't find a kill on an invincible target, especially when you're, uh, you uh, just don't have any CC to get him out of it. They had none right. at all. Exactly. And however, the thing is that what I was going to mention before we look at the replay, mm -hmm. four ultimates online for them. No ultimates online except for the possible Ceres ult that will come up this fight for Cyclone. Yeah, if I'm bust down, I'm feeling good about it. Right, yeah, I right, mean, exactly. You won every exactly. single mid up to this point almost dominantly. Exactly. So unless Cyclone changes something up, I, I don't know if bust down can lose this mid fight. And they're not changing anything up. They're taking it the same way. Yeah, I mean, here come the shots. The divider goes up along with the wall, but they're playing it to their strengths. Like, again, the barrage comes through. He's trying to get some damage, but they just go behind the corner to dodge it. Oh my god, Styles walked in front of the stasis field to use the seismic crash, so he was able to get burned down by Wilshmania. That's so bad for Bust Down. They're losing everybody here. Cyclone now with their triple tank. If they can forward zone, this could be really, really hard for Bust Down to retake. Yeah. Dream's getting pushed out here too. He's gonna maybe vine out. No, Kings isn't gonna push far enough. Welsh actually finding poke in main. Might get the kill, but oh, he gets traded man. for it. The fact that he went down is going to mean big. That means they're going to try and push in as best as they can. They might try and focus the Ash, at least try and force her back. He tries the wall to make sure that she can't shoulder, shoulder bash through it, but she does anyway. The Assert Dominance, it came back up just at the right time. Whirlwind to give himself CC immunity to try and heal everybody in a certain area, but he ends up canceling it. He just did that to try and make sure that he didn't die in that exchange. Yeah, and they couldn't. They just couldn't deal with them. But yeah. looks like they actually managed to find the healer for the triple tank. That's a lot of sustain down. It oh. might have been finding fanatics in the banana. They're putting on a ton of pressure <laughs> from this high ground. Looks like the Ash might have to be the one to touch, but she doesn't have the assert dominance, so she's not going to last very long, especially with Emmerfish breathing down her neck. Yeah, the body block coming out from Kings are going to be able to kill him, and if anything, stagger him. Now he has to make his way back to the point, but Styles going down again. That's going to be so hard. We were just talking about why they had to back off last round. Now that Emmerfish is down too, they're going to be definitely forced to back off. And now it looks like that Cyclone might actually close this one out. Yeah, Welsh Mania's rotation back into the church just absolutely picked Bust Down apart. All that damage coming in. They were both standing on their stairs and they couldn't get close oh, enough. Oh, man. Hyperbeam to deny it. The Nara didn't use her mother's grace in time. She's not going to be able to reach. It looks like this is going to be over. Cyclone oh, takes Stone Keep. Man. I hate to see that type of thing happen.
Yeah, especially with all the mids were going so in bust down's favor. They had yeah. it paid off, but Styles just went a step too far. Yeah. Big Toe is stepping out in front of the stasis field, and your Big Toe de deals just as much damage as the rest of your body. 100%. Walsh Mania applies all that Vivian pressure, gets that free pick, and it didn't win the mid for them. Mm -hmm. That pick specifically did not win the entire mid, but it got them that early pressure, which right, burst right, out right. the ultimates. It was kind of a snowball effect, and... Mm -hmm. Man, bust down. You hate to see it when you get when you have such good success earlier in the round. Right, exactly. And last time it was I checked the not bust down, but Cyclone was the one that had like most of their ultimates up. So yeah. they so Cyclone they were, built it through the fight. Right, exactly, the fight exactly, went so exactly. Long. Yeah, and they utilized them just. I mean, wow. I'm right. Yeah, like look at the damage on Victor. Look at the damage on Vivian more than anything Almost though. Okay. Almost two hundred thousand. You expect that when you have a Torvald pocketed DPS, I think. Especially right, a right, DPS right. as influential as Vivian in the console meta. I mm -hmm. mean, you see her get banned constantly. And when you have her even more boosted, you can tell it's going to be an absolute just force. Yeah. Both DPSs for bust down, I think, had decent performances as well mm -hmm. against the triple tank. Especially since your damage into shields doesn't count. Right, exactly. It doesn't count to your damage stat. So you can just say, that's just the damage that actually got through. You got to think about all the damage that they were putting on. Without dying that much, the deaths across the board are pretty even. Minus, I think, the only two on double digits were Emmerfish and Aryabon. Yeah, I mean... Gosh, man, like, this is... If there's ever a testament that I had to make about why you get rid of Torvald, or why <laughs> you mostly see him banned in PPL or PML or even Console League, this is why. Yeah, making... This is exactly why. Making your carries better. I mean, yeah. these teams are... The tanks, their role is just to enable the DPSs, make room for them, and if you have two tanks already making space and then a Torvald giving Welsh Mania even more right. damage, I mean, you can just see these numbers. I think this is going to be the Inara just a little ahead of the stasis field. Unsafe. They didn't have the damage to follow up after. The Barrage not going to find the kills they wanted it to. Welsh was just a force this game. Yeah, that Rezil just coming online enough to where he wasn't stunned too long. You just saw he did get hit by the side of the crash. It wasn't enough of the stun. You just see him rushing, just rushing people down in general. Yeah. And that's going to not only net them the game, but that's the kind of pressure he was exuding this entire time. I mean, you watch games like that, you remember why Vivian is so good. Right. Vivian's also kind of a counter pick into shield compositions in general because mm. she's so consistent with her damage. She has those cards that give her the almost infinite clip. Right, right. When you run into shield comps, it's really strong. They had such a strong shield comp that even just taking that counter pick just mm. enabled Cyclone's draft even further. Yeah, I mean, with them being up two now to one, we're really going to have to see what this team is going to have to bring out. Yeah, Norton. Bust Out's like, going yeah, to they're, they're gonna have to pull Bust Out's going to have to bust down <laughs> on these next few games. I, I try it. I try it. Look. I believe. Come on. Thank, thank you, Chris. Like, I appreciate <laughs> that. We're going to cut right to a quick break, and then we'll be right back into the PCL. INAP, powering the control room for the Paladins console league. Welcome back in on the back end of a Cyclone victory. They get the Torvald, they get the Vivian, and they get nearly 200,000 damage on their way to a win on Stonekeep. Gormeister, that's why you take away a Torvald. That's why you yep. don't let a team get a Torvald, much less pair it with something like a Vivian. I think the biggest thing that came through that Cyclone showed is that even though... I want to say over time, Torvald technically kind of falls off. Wrecker typically gets bought up a little bit more. The bubbles become easier to pop. Right. If you get Torvald and the other team isn't as prepared to deal with it, you can still win. I mean, there were there were moments of uh, moments of closeness. Another four three oh, yeah. in this set that just shows going down the stretch. It was it was a lot of that as well, where where Bustdown was really starting to catch up to Cyclone. Things were kind of hanging in the balance. 
uh, Stone Keep, excuse me, was map number three. Map number four hanging in the balance here. It's going to be up to bust down to choose and, and select where we go after losing the last one. Splitstone Quarry is where we're going to head. 4-3 in this set, 4-1, 4-0 on either side of it, though. This is actually, I think, the one that is probably going to be the most indicative of how far ahead Cyclone is if they win, and if they yeah. don't, that also answers the same question, right? Because, like you said, 4-1, 4-0, then we go to a 4-3, even though Cyclone has... It's, I'm still on the fence about that composition because it has things that go right for them, but it sure. also has a lot of things that I think just don't work for them. Now you come into this map, and if you win this 4041 either side, it's just kind of showcasing, look, this used to be one with a big gap, two. Right. Now we're one and two. Right. I mean, if last if last game showed us anything, it's very much that, yeah. where, you know, even if, even if Cyclone is still the favorite, and they still are, I mean, just one map loss up to this point is not enough to, uh, to turn that... But, you know, they went 12-0 and 0 last split, still the favorite, but, but Bust Downer, they're right there. Some of these weeks, I mean, that's a 4-3. If that goes the other way, Bust Downer now up 2-1 in this set. So things are going to maybe get interesting in this region where Cyclone ran away with it in our last split. Sky Tyra band out. Torvald Talus, not quite as interesting, but the Sky is an interesting band. Yeah, I don't... I'm, I will defer to Bust Down on this one since they play console Splitstone Quarry way more than I do, but... No kidding. Based on a vertical <laughs> on on a vertical map where Sky to flank literally anyone who should be in a good position has to go all the way around the point You're up a ramp to get time. behind them. Right. It just doesn't feel like she's actually a threat here. <laughs> That's right. the thing I have an issue with. It's just that in my mind could be you know, like we see Kanga doing in the Premier League where it's like we're going to ban Cassie because Cassie's pretty decent but also because we want to ban something good without really having to ban away the things we want. Like we don't want to ban Genos. We don't want to ban Atlas. We don't want to ban Makoa. We want to get as many of those as physically possible. But at the same time, it kind of feels like a throwaway. I mean, in a in a way, I mean, if you if we want to try to maybe dig into it, they know they're going Makoa. Sky can shred a Makoa if you hit your your poison bolts and yep. enough of your auto or your primary attack, I should say. After that, so Incoming. some merit, maybe they know what they're going to pick down the stretch. Let's eliminate something that's a big threat to it. Genos Makoa Victor, though, it's a pretty potent stack on that side. Cyclone going Atlas Vivian. Vivian, uh, if you're able to sit back and free fire, even whether it's on the top or on that bleacher section, the moment those Sentinels come out, that damage is going to be doing, uh, well, a lot of damage in this case. Willow's going to round out the damage dealers unless they go triple DPS with maybe an Anara pick down the back end. I'm glad we haven't seen Terminus in a minute, though. I have to say. I miss... <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me preface this. I'm sad we don't see as much Terminus. But the way it's looked over the past few games, I'm glad we are not still leaning into the Terminus. It's just one of those things. He can be very hit or miss. Where and I think the, the only downside to him today is just where these console teams have been putting him. Right. I think he could work as the off tank. But unfortunately, away. you also have to hope that all the other off tanks are really kind of banned out. Like, there's no sure. reason to pick him as an off tank if Atlas, Makoa, Khan, Ash are available in the game. True. Ruckus, even. But there's no reason to have him as a point tank because he just doesn't stand up to a Nara or Barrick. Yeah, there was that one example. Actually, it was split stone Corey last time around where it's literally an Inara and a Terminus just poking at each other on the payload, and the Terminus had to leave like miles ahead of when the Inara would have had to because she was just somehow outdoing the Terminus. Maybe some outside forces at play. Cyclone up 2-1. Do they have the lineup to do it, Gore? Honestly, I think so. I think Atlas Vivian on its own is going to be a winning combo. You add the Willow, then the Grover heals into it. I think Cyclone have a little bit of a leg up. Keep your eyes on that, McCullough. Well, Gore says yes. Stefan. Kresnik, do you say yes as well? Yes. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I say I, yes I just to wanted Makoa to be contrarian. Always. I'm sorry, I wasn't really trying to. No, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just trying to burst no, your bubble right, here. It's all right, it's all right. No, no, I think Cyclone's draft is great. Yeah, I, map, oh, I yeah, 100% agree Personal. as well. I, I, I think it's really good on Split Zone. I yeah. think it's really, really good for this map. And, I, and Gore mentioned about focusing on the Makoa, but I don't know what space the Makoa, like how far in the Makoa will be able to get right. with the strong backline that Cyclone has. Yes, Vivian has to be in, in the thick of it a little bit more brawling out, but I think that Cyclone will have her protected enough where I'm not sure what this Makoa is going to be able to do. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, the game hasn't even really started yet, but I do like Cyclone's draft a lot. The Drogos is an interesting pick for Bustown, too. I agree. I, I, I do agree with that one. 
He's gonna have to play kind of defensively up on the high ground. Right yeah. here, using this as cover to try to take their high, but if they see him coming, yeah, they could just drop down. And if they're playing in the quarry, he's not gonna really be that effective as he tries to find some hope here on the scarcity. Oh, Welsh finding the first blood for Cyclone. They are forcing them all the way back. Doggo went a little bit too far into the back line, was trying to get some kills off, but he is finding the damage. May not get the kills, but that damage is ever present. That's always so scary with Drogos, him being able to hide behind a lot of these walls, take shots when he needs to and look for fights. Fire Spit comes through. Doesn't really find anybody. He's trying to use the salvage, trying to get some rockets. They're all stuck in this little corner right here. He's, well, really, this little room. He's going to try yeah. and see if he can hit him with a few rockets. Yeah, I mean, Cyclone's playing this really well. This is how you have to play against Drogos on this map unless they force you out. They don't have a way to really force them out other than Makoa pushing, but they can see that coming. They can spam it ahead of time. Yeah. And they just can't get onto them at all. Uh, Drogo's getting kind of countered by this, so he has to drop down, pull back a little bit, maybe try to shoot the diving Atlas. He decides to go for the Vivian instead, who gets really low. He's going to try to chase that kill. Looks like she kites away into the Grover's heels, trading out for the, for the Barrack as well. This is dominant. Cyclones mid. Yeah, they. What else can you say? You said it perfectly. Dominantly, Cyclones mid. Yeah. They really won that fight. They exerted their pressure where they needed to. They capitalized on it. And now you're just seeing Emmerfish, man, like living. So being forced to use that shield just to make sure Vivian does not kill him. And now we see Victor. He's trying to move around. He's trying to maneuver himself. Trying to get a few shots here and there. Use the grenades. Use his mobility. Try and get something going. The Dragon Punch actually came through and does find Yui. He does find the kill on him. Double kill for Doggo. Styles finds one of his own. And now the rest of them, bust out, going to try and push them back. Wow, that was a really quick conversion. It I was, think, yeah. It was. That Dragon Punch got, got flipped on really quickly. I mean, it shows bust out is a team with, with decent coordination. I mean, they found that pick. They walked in, immediately found two more. Positioning maybe is something they'd have to they'd have to think about. But their team as a whole, they, they seem to be moving to good enough as a unit together to... to catch these wins to win these fights throughout. Two tanks moving towards the cart, catching out the Barrack. Actually, perfectly oh, shields man. the setback. What a barricade by the Barrack. That was so, so, so well timed. It was really, really good. A through time and space tries to find anybody, doesn't find anyone, but Doggo finds a kill of his own onto Yui. Anara does go down. The Natics being forced all the way back. The rest of Bust Down are rushing him down, trying to body block him, and they manage to find it. Not only that, they find a kill as well. Bust Down, man. It's like every time Cyclone get back to the point, they are just hammering the defense. Like, they are just forcing them so far back. This is a really tough point, I think, to retake if you're Cyclone, or at least yeah. an area to push if you're Cyclone, because not only are you, do you have to deal with this crazy high ground advantage once you push through this bottom right area, but the Drogos is able to pressure you as you're coming in because of his rotation potential. Just like that, I mean, he caught them coming yep. in on the flank, but he can apply a lot of damage on the way in, and then the cleanup, honestly, just comes to Arya Vaughn and everybody else on bust down. But the Fae Flight actually looks like it found two during that. Jeddah's having to run away, probably gonna get picked off by Pear, but he has to reload oh. scarcity, barely <laughs> manages to make it into the Blossom range. Fantastic <laughs> rotation. And honestly, really unlucky for Bear not being able yep. to find that kill on Scarcity. Very, very unlucky indeed. Because of that, him and Emmerfish go down. They do find the kill on the Scarcity though. Styles being just holding the high ground, trying to hold this corner right here. But it's going to be too much. There are three individuals up there. The rest of his team, with them being down, they do have four ultimates online. And Cyclone only really has three, but I'm assuming the Vivian ult was already used, really, to be fair, at this yeah. point. It looks like, I mean, she could have used it and gotten shot. Oh, missed oh. hook, unfortunate, yep. by the Makoa onto Thanatics. He's still controlling this mines area. They're a little split from there in our own point, though. She's going to need to get some health quicker. This isn't going to convert for Cyclone. They're yep. going to want to push. Looks like Thanatics is trying to find that space for him to get in. Gets hooked, still has oh, his rewind. Going to have to use it, but he setbacks instead. So unfortunate, you can't cancel your abilities to make that work. It was still traded out, though, so Cyclone still have a shot at this. The Void Grip, just too powerful. Welsh Mania finds two kills, though. One on the Genos, one on the Victor. Because of that, they're going to have to drop the Dome Shield. They want to make sure that they don't push this in. Cyclone is trying super hard to make sure that they can use this. The damage from Vivian, though, through time and space. He has to force move out of the way. Makoa right there has to use Ancient Rage to make sure he doesn't die either. Welsh just stuck in the corner. Can't move away from Makoa. That's going to be enough. They're going to force the Inara off a point, and they're going to be able to defend it successfully. 1-1 one, one for Bust Down and Cyclone GG. That's so good for Cyclone. I mean, yeah, yeah. they didn't convert, but you got to think... What we watched from that first mid, they were holding that quarry area very yeah. hard. They were kind of keeping it locked down. And with both of these ultimates being used, 
I mean, I don't know if they have a way to force them out of the, the keep area, the quarry area. Well, this is the quick conversion that uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Bustdown was able to get before with those, those fast kills. Grover, I think, getting caught out a little. Paradoga, by the way, on Drogo is, I mean, he really would have to pop off to make this work. That's why they have to playing around him so well. And you can see when he's not being contested, he is making himself, himself known. He's putting on a lot of damage, putting on a lot of pressure. Three, Still top damaging two, in this game over the Victor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta Whoa. think console Victor. Right, you yeah. expect them to be top damaging, but Paradoggo reminding us that blasters are playable on the sticks as well. True, yeah, and I mean, Victor isn't too far behind either. He's only down by like, I think like about 2,000 damage or, or so. Like, he could still catch up, but once again, you made an excellent point. Console Victor, you don't really expect them to see like, sec be second to anyone, Yeah. really. Like, you don't really expect to see that, but indeed you do. The Faith Fly comes out. They do use the Seismic Crash as well. They manage to find the kill onto the Barrack. Emmerfish is the next that goes down on the Makoa. Two of them are down. One of them just respawned. They're gonna try and make it back, but now Cyclone, they're trying to make sure they keep this pressure going. They do manage to kill Doggo as well. The Victor's gonna try to run all the way up, but not before Scarcity could just barely make it out. Healing from Grover is enough, 72% on the point for them. Yeah, great zone here by Cyclone at this point. Barrage coming in might at least forces them off, but Yui can just kind yeah. of face tank that as an R on point. Will they get the wall into the barrack? Looks like they're just gonna yep. shoot him into No, the boop actually, the wall booped him yeah, back. Yeah, it, did. it did. Really, really well positioned by Yui, and they get that mid. Great play from them. I actually love how Scarcity was playing his Faith Flight. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love how he's using the new maneuverability that was added to it in the Sun and Moon update to just get in their face, AD, well not AD, I guess it's left stick, right stick, yeah. uh, back and forth to dodge those shots and just really abusing the changes to Willow very effectively. They're showing that they're ready for this meta. Good shot after shot coming true. We see that bust down. Yeah, really, man, like, is this, we're seeing the same thing that happened last time. It was like their Cyclone pushes in, they have such a strong mid fight, they push in, and then all of a sudden, Bust Down just awakens. They're so good at holding this bridge. Like, you see that so many of them on the side of Cyclone are low. They're trying to find a way in, but just this this high ground control is a lot for them right now. Yeah, the Drogo's applying pressure before they come in is a big deal of it, too. It looks like he also, his ability to rotate, too, to stop these yeah. flank area pushes are really strong. He's holding just above this door, waiting to salvo, but he gets distracted by the Willow, actually. Ooh. They managed to get the Exile in. He's going to Dragon Punch and try to maybe stem this tide of aggression. Going oh, for the Grover, but he was already low. I don't yeah. know if that's the trade they wanted. Still, even as he drops down to try to kill the Vivian, but Scarcity yeah. finds two. I... I'm not quite sure about that one either, to be fair with you, Chris Nick. I mean, he did use, like, you, you you said it. Like, he used the Dragon Punch to really try and optimize on, like, what was happening, but he already went on an already low target. Yeah. Um, But I do still think that that does, it doesn't really quite work out for them, but at the same time, mistakes do happen. There yeah. are three ultimates that are online right now. Uh, Scarcity has to back off. He's trying to be forced to back off just a little bit. Use his Faith Fly. Try and get to where it is he's going to go. Now they're going to be this the, is the aerial battle. Yeah! They're going to have the dogfight coming in between Scarcity <laughs> and Pear. Nobody able to confirm quite on the other, but neither really getting healed up either. McCoy trying to find it, but uses Ancient Rage instead to apply some pressure into the mind. Misses the hook, rotates out. Maybe tries to find a flank pick, but there's everybody's hiding. They're not close enough for him to catch. Dome Shield drops down as well to try and get the Inar off of point and away from it. Doggo finds the kill in the Welsh. Seismic crash. Crash just used, but right when he's about to die, he does get killed the stun. Nobody's able to capitalize on it. Doggo looking super low. Grover with the axe does manage to snipe out the sky. Vine grip to try and get in there. It's not going to be enough. Him and Willow have to back off. I don't know if they're going to be able to make it back in time. Grover goes down. I don't think Scarcity is going to be able to try and fight back, really. If they don't himself. check him, he can jump over the wall and at True. least get the overtime. True. Also, Yui, still on his mount, kind of uncontested oh. there while Welsh is distracting yeah. the rest of them. They're, they know he's there now, but no. oh, what great focus by Bust Down. They caught that. That damage, that was a DRing Inara with Mother's Grace getting melted that yeah. quickly. That's impressive by Bust Down. They reacted very fast. They did. And now we see the Victor on top. Yes. Now we see the Tim on top with the damage, which is what, what we were just talking about. You're expecting to see that with Victor, and now we're seeing it. We're seeing that bust down. Really, this these bridge fights, man. It's yeah. like Cyclone. It, it's the strength of their composition. Yeah, it is. Being it able is. to hold that. And, and the thing is, that's why I feel bad almost for their draft, because when you're like, yeah, we're so good on the defenses. Like, that's great, but if you win every defense, you still lose the game. No, they yeah. need to find their way to convert on mid. They need to find a way to break this quarry hold that Cyclone have been hold doing because if three, they can't get through, two, this game's going to end 3-1. Yeah, that's going to be a lot for them to try and handle. We see that Bust Down's going to try and move on to point. One ultimate online, the Banishment is there. The Exile really is there. The They do have the Barrage. A few ultimates are, are slowly building up on the side of Bust Down, but them trying to hold up this top. Welsh is just running in there. Scarcity gets picked off. 
But Cyclone, they're just moving. They're trying to go in. They're trying to get these kills. And I see the rest of them just this damage from Vivian. So much good rotation from them. Yeah, now they're holding their high ground. As long as they right, pay yeah. attention to the respawns, this is fantastic for Cyclone. That was their answer. They thought maybe Bustdown will be over aggressive to try to get onto us. They said, oh, screw that. We'll just push through. Yeah. We don't care about being stopped. But Pear coming back actually Here manages to flank around to Welsh. Who does Pear manage to find with this Dragon Punch? Looks like he does catch the Natix with it. Good kit, good kill. Not able to rewind that. Coming in with a Salvo too. Maybe trying to find another. But the Grover, oh, 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 oh. unfortunate. Wow, does not yeah. make it over the wall. It gets caught by the Spit Salvo combo. Yeah, he does. Unfortunately, he does go down because of that. They're here is now stagger cyclone having to be forced to back out such a good rotation that just changed the drop of a dime man mm -hmm. like it was like they had it they were moving they were going up there to the high ground they're trying to apply this pressure and all of a sudden it was like like what happened like it was like they, all of a sudden it was like the fight was just flip to bust down side. The respawns change things really quick. The time and space doesn't find anything. They actually also used the barrage on the Faith Line yep. Willow, but Scar City's movement was able to perfectly avoid all of that. Whirlwind to counter the Ancient Rage, but that's a lot of health to burn through. Dead zone means it's going to be a little bit easier as Welsh finds two on the backside. Yeah, oh man. Emmerfish goes down. Now, once again, we're seeing a trend here. Like, they capture this first point, and they push in, and then they have such a hard time getting past this bridge. However, one thing it was I noticed that you mentioned last time was that if they do get, the, if they are winning these mid fights, that, that's going to win them the game. Yes. Like that's yeah. going to win them the game regardless of where the bust down is defending really well or not. If they can capture these mid fights every time, then they've, They've pretty much got it. Doesn't mean they'll win guaranteed, yeah. but it does mean that they have pressure that bust down needs to recognize. Yeah, exactly. You feel really good if you're winning those fights. Yeah. And actually, Cyclone, because of how late they won that mid fight last time, too, this is looking better for them. They got through the staggers, so they couldn't Ooh. come forward to that bridge defense. Now they're here with two minutes on the clock. Early oh, exile onto man. the barrack. Reloading means he won't be able to punish that, but he's going to pull back and try to deal with Pear anyway. Pear does Ooh. not manage to get away, actually. Thought he would, but. Really good axes by Kings to confirm that. The Natic's pushing down here. Barracks stuck in the dead zone. Might have to dome shield if the pressure stays high enough. And he's actually, if he's going to do it, it's oh, going to be off man. cart. He doesn't even manage to get it off in time. Great Come pressure from Cyclone. On. Man, oh man, we're seeing a shift here. Now Cyclone barely in contesting from the bridge because of when they decided, well, not win, but when they won that mid fight. It just worked out so well when the barrage comes through. Scarcity has to move away. Tries to make sure he doesn't get sniped out through time and space. Just as I mentioned that, doesn't find anybody that might get some damage. Dome Shield to go down. A minute 15 left on the clock. Doggo trying to do what he can. He does manage to kill Yui. But man, oh man, they still have so much time. Even if they do lose this fight, they have so much time to come back. Yeah, the, the contest that they did to buy time for the barrack to come back and don't yeah. shield was what won them that fight. But Cyclone have enough time to refight this and no tank ultimates up for bust down, yeah. only the Dragon Punch. The other ones are just half at max. You know, that's that's as close as they are. So they're gonna have to they're gonna have to find some picks without them, and they're getting forced back pretty early. Paradogo playing very defensive. I think they're just yeah. trying to avoid a back cap. Yeah, they are. I mean, I, not only that, but I feel like he just doesn't want to push out too far into like a really aggressive situation like this, because their comp is pretty aggressive. They are going in. They know when to go in. Cyclone is definitely applying that pressure, man. They're definitely punishing people for pushing out too far. And if there's anything it is, I wouldn't want to be caught out against. It would be like an Atlas, like a, like a, like an Atlas Vivian. Yeah, I think what Cyclone's hoping for is maybe they can charge up their Fae Flight and use that to convert, because they really don't have an effective counter for it. Victor's all right, but if you play out of the Ooh. side, they're not going to be able to do much. Fae oh! Flight comes in, finds two, just as I say that. Barrage 2 not oh, able to look at the, at the Fae Flight and Willow. No kills from that other than the Vivian, but it does not matter. Cyclone, Ooh. close that setup. What a way to close out. Yeah. With a triple kill? Uh, nice on a Fae Flight, just in on their spawn. Yeah, literally. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really using that new that new mechanic, that new movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say ability to cancel it, but that was not a Fae Flight that needed to be canceled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely they need to be canceled. Because once he saw that double kill, he just kept going in. Just having two of them got the healer and one other DPS, mm -hmm. man. And Victor was the one that was left back there in their spawn. He got that kill, and that's exactly what they needed to be able to clutch out that game. Yeah, yeah. The barrage came in onto the Vivian. If the Willow hadn't been in their spawn, I think it would have flipped things a little bit. But that, that early pressure from Cyclone forcing the ults early kind of made it almost an uh, inevitability that yeah. uh, just like some things that are inevitable, right, right, like we right. mentioned before in this game, mm -hmm. uh, they were just unable to defend that at all. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at the post game I mean, stats here, and we're seeing that Doggo did so well with just the damage bust down. Really, really tried their best to defend. It just wasn't enough for them. But they definitely weren't any slouches. But the Vivian, like the Willow, like they're like Cyclone. Like, I guess the way to put this is that the damage was good, but I feel like there was more to it than just that. 
Yeah, I but, think yeah. so. I think Cyclone just played really well. I mean, outside of those defenses, which definitely helped pad their stats a little bit in the long run, uh, the mid fights were just always Cyclone's game. I mean, yeah. they, they won every fight that, that really truly mattered, and Scarcity was a huge part of that. Definitely Willow, very strong pick on this map, but the pilot of it has to be good as well, and yeah. triple triple air shots on a Drogo is yeah. when you're, you know, in that pressure situation, coming in here on the side two with the Fae Flight. This is the one that kind of yeah, that confirmed it. the game with the double Blast Flower stacks onto them. Uh, you have to have a good pilot on the Willow to make it work, and Scarcity really proved himself here and said that he can. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> said it perfectly. Like I really Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that makes like, you feel a lot better, actually. Yeah, like literally, like no other, no, really, no other way. The to tank say pressure it. too. Tank pressure too is a really yeah. big deal because denying them from taking, denying them from taking that quarry area, not letting them force them out into Doggo's sight lines was another big part. Because yeah. you know, if they couldn't, if Doggo's not getting that damage, if Doggo's able to spam down onto them, then those mid fights could have gone bust down's way. Well. What a convincing game from Cyclone. They did super, super good in general. But let's throw it back to Desk, see what their thoughts are on it. Thank you, fellas. Cyclone rounds out our second set of the day with a 3-1 victory. More of the same from them. You expect nothing short uh, from the leaders who ended up going to MSI from this region. Fun set to watch, though, Gore. Steady improvements from Bust Down, uh, but Cyclone, they remain on top. And it's one of those things, like, I feel like every time we watch this matchup, match like Bust Down gets a little closer, but it's still just just far enough apart that they can't win yeah. it. Like that's just the most unfortunate position to be in because like sure. it's like that that false hope. Like you're gonna get there one day, and then you just don't get there, right? You don't get like you see the progress being made, but you're still not quite where you want to be. I think a lot of it is gonna come down to like drafting some of those mm -hmm. things like that. But sometimes, I mean, Cyclone are just scary. They are. They're a very scary team, like, especially when you give them some of the compositions that they had today. We had uh, the Torvald and Torvald Vivian. That was just too much. Nearly 200k yeah. damage. Well, set one of the day is in the books for this region. Let's take a look and see where the standings stand after the two games are in the book. Grok, Paper, Scissors up against Vroom Froom, I believe is how to pronounce that. First team, all name teams there. Vroom Froom, of course, coming out with the win in that Ninja Zen, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Craft, Valerian, Naiju, and Legends are on that squad. Cyclone GG, of course, up top with a 2 plus minus. Grok, Paper, Scissors, and Bust Down down on the bottom. And then EUPS4, we saw those standings earlier today with Flashpoint and Aramon are grabbing the wins. And the biggest difference you can see, just looking at it again, you'll notice three ones mm -hmm. over here for Xbox versus the three O's that you see down for PS4. I, I think just kind of testifying not only that relegations kind of close things up a little bit mm -hmm. more for them, but just showcasing that I feel like this might might be the split. Cyclone doesn't get all the way through. Well, defeatless, I should say. Like being able to go through without losing a single set. I want to see one of these teams step up. <laughs> I, don't know. I just don't know good. which one's going to be the one to do it. I mean, they're good. The problem is they're so good. They're I don't know. Really I mean, good at the game. Maybe somebody steps up and uh, and takes the win. So that's the, it's the like European. It's someone's going to be Flashpoint. I don't know why. I, I'm going out on a branch that's breaking underneath my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Keep going. I mean, yeah. At this point, they're not even going to, you know, I don't even know if they're favorites to go to land anymore if we're, we're going along <laughs> this string. Just, he said that. I did not say that. That was definitely I, Gore's thought that uh, yeah. I'm, I'm putting you out. I'm pushing you further out onto that limb. The European side of the console league is done, though, for the day. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to North America. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins console league. 